boy Akasha. What up, YouTube? This is your boy M West. I'm gonna flash this BenQ driver that I have right here uh, using Jungle Flasher 1.66. Um, I already took the Xbox apart, so what I'm gonna do is connect over my connectivity kit, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn the camera directly onto the computer screen so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna plug up the SATA cable to the back of the drive. And then the connectivity kit, which is kind of hard for me to plug in at this angle, but it goes in anyway. Right? So what I'm going to do is turn the drive on. As you can see here on the connectivity kit, that the light is actually lighting up red. And let me zoom in on that a little bit for you. Okay. The probe is lighting up blue and green. All that matters is to make sure that your connectivity kit is lit up red, not blue. If you have it on blue, it's in mode B. I've been hearing a lot of people asking questions about that. Make sure that it's on red. Turn it that color, that's mode B, that's blue. Turn it back. That's what it should look like. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and eject the drive. As you can see, the drive is fully ejected. Pull it back a little bit for you guys. I'm going to turn the connectivity kit off. Slide it in halfway. You can put your finger in there to stop it. There's no magic distance. Just slide the shit back in halfway. Don't ask me any ridiculous questions about that. Turn it back on, and now your drive is officially in mode B. So I'm going to pause it right here for a second. Turn it onto the screen. I'm going to open up the Jungle Flash for 1.6 so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so I have the Jungle Flash for 1.66 beta open. And the first tab that you want to click on is the MTK Flash 32. Okay, right here you can see the correct port. Uh, mine is going to be B400. Yours is going to be something totally different. Each computer has a different uh, port. Um, the port is usually the port that your SATA connection is connected to. I have one of the VIA cards, the VT6421 RAID controllers. Um, down here on the drive properties you can see SATA, name DVD-ROM, uh, revision firmware, all that other bullshit. Uh, first thing that you want to click on is BenQ Unlock. Very simple, it's sending the magic keys to the drive. Okay. The next thing you want to hit on is read. It's reading the banks. Okay, now it's asking me where do I want to save that file to. Uh, so I'm going to create a folder name. You can name it anything you want to. You don't have to do it. I just do this to be better organized. Folder. Uh, let's see what I'm going to call it. Name the jackass. I'm going to save the file in there. If you have your firmware placed in your firm place firmware here folder, it should auto load. It should give you um, this information. It says BenQ firmware loaded to source buffer. Do you wish to auto load BenQ I Extreme? Uh, you want to click yes. If you don't have it loaded, if you don't have the place firmware here in the firmware folder, um, don't worry about it. You can always go and grab the firmware from whatever folder it's at. If you already have it in there, then you're fine. You're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes. What it did, it um, loaded the keys for me, it spoofed the keys, and then um, it saved the file. It did everything for me automatically. You don't have to do anything else from here. Next, you want to go back to the MTK Flash 32 tab. You know, click on write. Sending chip erase, writing to bank 0, writing to bank 1, writing to bank 2, writing to bank 3. Okay, and now it's gonna it's gonna read those banks and test it for you, and this is gonna let you know if your flash went through okay. You should get an okay um, right verified sign here, and that's it. Uh, somebody asked me the other day about the outro. Um, if you don't hit it, don't worry about it. If you forget, don't worry about it. Um, what the outro helps you do is uh, takes the drive out of mode B, so when you connect it back up to the Xbox, you can jump right into testing your game or playing it.
Uh, one thing I forgot to tell you after the outro, um, after you outro it, you want to go, it's going to give you, you want to close down the program. Then it's going to give you, um, this is going to give you an option to save a file from it. This is a, a text document or, yeah, a TXT file, and you can just save that, and that's like your log file. It lets you know if it went through properly, if it didn't. It's just going to give you all the information about your flash, and so you can just save that, shut it down, and that's it. Uh, why I'm showing this part is just in case some moron asks me a question. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my pro, my kit, disconnect it. Done. Plug everything back up. Flash and Ben Qs are the easiest. You don't have to have the connectivity kit to flash it. I recommend it. I just like having a connectivity kit. It makes it easier. You don't have to deal with the drive closing back up on your hand and all that stuff. A lot of people like to say, oh, you don't need the kit. The kit's good. works great. Um, makes this process a little bit easier. So next I'm going to go ahead and test out the same Xbox um, on the other side so you guys can see it um, load up the game. So this is the final step uh, to test the Xbox to make sure that um, everything flashed on there properly. So I have the Xbox connected up. Um, it's still opened up. So I'm going to go ahead and close the tray. Alright, and there you have it. Burn Cam is working on the Xbox on a BenQ drive using Jungle Flasher 1.66. Um, if you guys have any questions, as always, hit me up. Uh, this is your boy M. West, and I'm out, bitches.